Hi, my name is Random Tuesday, and this video I'm going to talk you through my Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Lady Urbosa cosplay. There are a lot of parts and pieces to this costume, so hopefully this visual guide breakdown will give you a little bit more insight on how to create your own Champion of Hyrule costume. And in the meantime, if you do have any questions or concerns, do not hesitate to leave them in the comments section below. You can also head over to my website, randomtuesday.net, for more resources, tutorials, and information on this and many other cosplays. There are a lot of different parts to Lady Urbosa's cosplay, so I'm going to attempt to talk you through this in as simple and logical a way as I possibly can. So we're going to start uh, essentially in the order with which I put this on. So the first portion is our skirt, and I'm going to use that term loosely. Now this is constructed of several different pieces. The main part you'll notice are these belt sections. Each of these, I uh, sculpted a master version of them using some Sculpey, baked that in the oven, and then created two separate silicon molds, one for each kind, and then cast it out of polyurethane plastic. Um, these create kind of a white, off-whitish sort of color. The painting was then a process, and, and we'll talk about the painting kind of as we go through, but the basic idea was that these were primed, then spray painted with a gold chrome spray paint, then they were uh, highlighted and low lighted using uh, rub and buff, which I actually had a really hard time with the gold chrome spray paint. So I think I ended up covering most of this with two different shades of rub and buff. Uh, rubbed and buffed that in, and then used a spray sealant over the top. Um, in this case, I used a uh, floor varnish and a combination of acrylic top UV top coating. The painting was a nightmare. There's a little bit more detail about that up on my Patreon, and I'll also be going into more detail over on my website uh, in the blog post for this. Now, each of these pieces was then attached to the skirt. And the skirt is just made out of some blue satin. Uh, it's essentially a rectangle with a sloped edge. So you can see it's uh, clearly longer on one side than the other. And what I would have done, what I did, was gather the edge. What I'd recommend doing is rather than creating a gathered edge, I would make a circle skirt base for this fabric. Because if you look at a lot of the pictures of Herbosa, she's got a lot of movement, uh, which you don't get when you gather a straight fabric. You would get a lot more of that if you're cutting a circle skirt. The gathered edge was then sewn to a piece of twill tape, a one inch wide piece of twill tape, and then each of these individual belt sections was glued in place onto that twill tape. Now, to be able to get this on and off, I have a small section right here that is elastic. So you can see it's basically the whole belt and then an extra section of elastic that was sewn to the twill tape, and then just a snap that goes over the top. You'll notice there are two snaps, that'll be important. Later on, uh, there's only one snap needed to snap this portion. Snack and, snack, and, snack and snap is used for something else. Now the decorating on the skirt, let me get this on the model and then we'll talk about it. Now, there are a few different bits of decoration on this skirt section. The first part, which you can see, are these little tabs. Uh, the tabs themselves were created out of a gold pleather, which was my saving grace in this costume. Then I have a small piece of red painted fabric, so I just used a white cotton fabric, painted it red with fabric, and then uh, fabric paint, and then cut it directly out, glued it on using hot glue. And then these little gold sections are those uh, brass colored um, rivets, essentially, that you can find, the ones that you use to make the spinners when you were in school. Uh, they have a fancy name, which name is I'm forgetting, and I will look up and it will flash on the screen for you. So these were used in each of them, and um, they're kind of placed alternating around all the way around the entire skirt. And I only glued the top section on so they would still move a little bit rather than being super stiff. Now the bottom edge of the skirt is a combination of a line of bias tape, which I sewed on, and then these triangle sections that are each painted using many, many layers of white fabric paint. Uh, I used the Jacquard Opaque White Fabric Paint. Uh, it's a very good brand. That being said, now that I've done this and I had to go through like five different coats of fabric paint, I would actually recommend probably using some sort of iron-on vinyl transfer because you're going to have fewer issues with the fact that you're dealing with a lighter color on a darker fabric. Uh, there's a couple of great brands and there's some more information about that over on my website post. This portion here, the lovely Van Boris, 
was also painted on using the fabric paint. Uh, I created a stencil, which I then sort of cut out and did a little bit of freehanding once my stencil inevitably failed me. Again, I probably think that now it would have been better off doing it using the vi vinyl transfer acrylic. My hope in using the fabric paint is that it would have given a softer finish, but given I had to use so many layers, kind of lost some of the hand of the fabric there. The next portion is her first, second belt, one of her belts. I don't know, she had a lot of belts. Uh, this one is a curve. You can see this piece is not a straight line. Uh, this is curved, so it goes over and around the hips, kind of sitting right underneath the line of these guys, these belt pieces in the back, and then coming up to, to close right here in the front. So this is where that other snap comes into play. These back pieces are fairly unfunctional. They're just tabs of the red matte satin uh, wrapped around. I actually glued them in place. This gold section is that same pleather that I use across the costume. Uh, it's an upholstery uh, vinyl that you can get. Uh, it's, I think, used for like car upholstery, although I'd love to see you ever had a gold car interior. And I cut a stencil, I essentially cut it out each of the holes and then hot glued it in place to the fabric. There is some interfacing in between these two layers of fabric to keep that belt a little bit stiffer. And the inner green sections are uh, glued pieces of green matte satin, uh, which is used later on in the costume as well. So this wraps right around here. And the underside has this extra snap, which goes onto the underbelt to keep it in place. And then two additional snaps here in the front to keep that together. Now this whole thing's gonna get covered because there's one final portion to her skirt. Uh, the last piece is her big buckle doodad gladiator face. Uh, this section here was created out of a combination of EVA foam and Warbla shaped over uh, a styrofoam ball that I had that was the right size. So I bent both of those over and then shaped them several times. Uh, these pieces are raised section of EVA foam that is glued to the Warbla section or glued to the EVA foam underneath and then covered with Warbla and that gives it that raised section. The whole thing was painted in the same way. Uh, some acrylic paint, the rub and buff combinations of gold. I use the rose gold uh, as sort of the shadow highlighting and then the lighter gold goes around the outside. And the whole thing was uh, sealed using that EV, uh, UV top coat as well as the um, furniture varnish. These bottom little flare bits are also made using combination of Warbla over EVA foam. And these pieces are cutouts again of that upholstery vinyl. It's just flat upholstery vinyl on the back. So it's a little sandwich of fabric sandwiched between two pieces of upholstery vinyl. The red portions is matching this red satin here that's used on the belt. And these portions are white fabric that has been fabric painted using the same fabric paint that I use on the bodice. Again, I used uh, jacquard fabric paints across the whole thing. And these little gold sections on the bottom were uh, sculpted out of Model Magic clay, which is a very light, foamy sort of clay that air dries, and then glued directly on using E6000 glue. In the back, I affixed two little tabs using the twill tape. Um, this is designed to essentially go around the, uh, the entire strap, so the strap on the skirt as well as the belt itself, to keep this in place and hide everything underneath it. So that's part of why I wanted to keep this um, hollow and not solid. These are uh, affixed in place using E6000 and then reinforced with some Warbler strips, and I have some snaps on the end. I folded the edges over to uh, help the snaps be a little bit more secure on that twill tape. So with sort of unceremoniously, you kind of just shove it under and snap it in place. And this covers the gap here. Uh, I kept these as separate, so they're only glued about a third of the way down, so that one, when I sit down, this whole thing bends with my leg, but also, and when I walk as well, but also because I liked the kind of gladiator look uh, that this ends up having. Uh, the top ends up being finally constructed as one whole section. Now the green section was a, a crop top that I drafted and then created out of some green satin fabric and put an elastic waistband or breast band underneath so it sits right underneath the bust. Uh, then we're adding all of the gold details on top, which I'll go to in a second. 
The first detail I added before any of the gold were these patterns. This is a cutout of white fabric, which I then used fabric paint, again, the Jacquard fabric paint in red and two shades of blue to paint this on by hand. I created a template, drew it on with pencil, and then uh, more or less freehanded each of these portions. It gave a nice, very clean look. I decided not to construct all of this out of uh, foam or warbler because partially there was a little bit more flexibility and fit I could get out of using fabric, um, but also I, can, I could get a closer fit and a less uh, bulky one by making portions of it out of fabric. I did the same sort of uh, fabric painting on the back. I then used a adhesive spray, an applique spray to stick it in place, and then did uh, stitching around the edge of it to keep it attached to the fabric. This whole thing is uh, two layers of satin with some interfacing in between to keep that really stiff. Next, we added all of the gold additions. The center line is just some more upholstery fabric, same as this back center line here, and the under armpit lines. These are made out of two pieces of that upholstery fabric sandwiched together to cover up the edge of the green fabric. The top portion, the center piece, is again EDA foam uh, covered with warbla and then sculpted and bent to hold its shape. This is just a large red rhinestone and uh, painted again using that combination of gold spray paint and rub and buff in gold. These are similarly warbler wrapped in EVA foam that go around the, the edges, uh, and this covers the crease in between the two of them. The underbust portion is a seri series of separate squares that are connected together using twill tape and then glued directly onto the actual uh, crop top. I wanted them to be separate pieces so that it would bend um, and actually curve around my body. So I had to make sure that I painted the intersection so when you looked at them, uh, they were still gold. Same thing up here, they are attached to twill tape, just glued in place. Each one is an individual piece, except right here in the front. Uh, these two are, are the same pieces attached directly to this side band, and these ones are three separate pieces in the middle. That gives it the most flexibility to move with my body, uh, as well as some structural integrity and uh, just a little bit more give. The thing closes in the side here using a side zipper. Uh, make sure that it is a zipper that is a separating zipper, or you will not be able to get in and out of it, which could be a problem. So this slips on over the head. And there is an extra little square tab that actually snaps in place over the top to hide where the zipper goes on that bottom. So you can see the bottom closure gets covered here. The whole thing sits on the form all the way around. With the top and the skirt completed, it is time to get into the nitty gritty of the accessories. And oh boy, she has a lot of them. So uh, let's start from the feet upwards. Our first accessory, our lovely pair of shoes. Uh, now these, can... <laughs> I started with a, a base of a pair of stiletto shoes that I found it. Uh, at a thrift store at Goodwill. Uh, then I took the green satin that is used in the bodice and other places uh, to essentially create a fabric cover th for them. So uh, to figure out the pattern for my fabric cover, I took my whole uh, foot ankle combo with the shoe on, wrapped it in saran wrap, then wrapped it in tape and drew the lines on it. And that's partly how I got this pattern here, as well as how I got the pattern for the actual shoe por portion. Uh, I basically glued it on using hot glue. I was pretty fortunate that I had a fabric shoe base and then take an X-Acto knife to just cut right along the edge here to give it that clean edge. The toe portions were done in a really similar way. It was the uh, gold uh, glue or the gold upholstery uh, pleather that I just glued directly on here in a stripe and then in just covering that toe portion. And the heels, I uh, painted them using uh, the gold rub and buff. So this portion here, uh, it's basically just a slightly curved strip of fabric. Uh, it is glued on one side, curves around, and then Velcro's in place. So the Velcro was sewn to twill tape, 
and then glued to the fabric as Velcro doesn't tend to like hot glue. And then this side was just stitched directly to the satin. So two of these make for her lovely pair of shoes. Next up, we have her ankle decorations because who doesn't need some of those? So these uh, fit just around the ankle and uh, give you wings, which I suppose is the costume equivalent of Red Bull. Now, each of these are made out of a piece of quarter inch EVA foam that is then just wrapped and covered in fabric that is glued directly onto it and a strip of that uh, pleather that goes in the middle. This section here is a little bit of warbler that kind of creates a, a post that goes across here and uh, connects to the EVA foam that this is glued to. And then the warbler uh, opens up on the inside and sort of flattens out here going through just a slit in that foam and then is glued down and covered with EVA foam so that it doesn't hurt me on the inside. Similarly, these are uh, glued together so you can see where that warbler sits in the middle. Just some more tabs of twill tape to add the Velcro to it. So it uh, Velcro's closed here and then a small little hook and eye to help really keep that uh, closure secure right along there. Uh, these were done in a really similar way to this section here. Uh, the edge is a sandwich of that gold pleather around the fabric, which is the green satin, and then the painted uh, red and blue and white uh, fabric on the cotton that was then stitched to the satin, glued in place around that EVA foam, and then the finishing edge was added. These little cross sort of structures are added with just a very small strip of that pleather. And so uh, each of these are basically just opposites of each other, and one goes on each ankle. And then that join was wrapped in the pleather right here. And so there is a slight uh, split that you can see in the back where it joins together. Her next biggest accessory would probably be her, her wings, arm floaties. So they are worn on either side. Uh, each of these are constructed in the same sort of way, very similar to the rest of it. The whole base is EVA foam covered with warbler that's then uh, heated and shaped into place so it kind of scrunches this way and then folds this way and then opens a little bit to the side. There was a lot of looking at reference and images and being like, close enough probably. Uh, the strap is a bit of that gold pleather with some elastic inside uh, to help keep it secure, although it doesn't have a ton of stretch to it. Um, and then there's two D-rings on each side kept in place using warbler. So just a little strip of warbler that holds the D-ring in place. And then the D-ring is attached to the gold fabric, uh, again, using some twill tape that is folded over and stitched in place. Uh, these were painted using the same acrylic paint, uh, acrylic spray paint with then rub and buff to highlight and low light. And the center section uh, was created, that raised edge was created, but before it was wrapped in warbler, uh, I used an EVA foam edge around it to have a raised section. The center portion was not painted. Instead, uh, I took the green fabric and again, the red, white, and blue uh, fabric painting, did the same thing here where I painted it, then stitched onto the green fabric, and then using some uh, PVA acrylic uh, PVA glue. I just glued the whole thing into the center, uh, cutting the edges out uh, with an X-Acto knife to give it a really clean edge. Um, the glue stops the fabric from fraying, although you do need to be careful because where I put a lot of it, you can see that I changed the color of the fabric a little bit. So both of these are essentially identical, just opposite each other, and slip onto her arms. She then has uh, several pieces of jewelry. The basic one are just her wrist guards. Now these are, let me put one on, uh, these are pipe cleaners, or should I say Chanel stems uh, that have been bunched together and then sewn into the uh, pleather, which was basically I sewed three channels um, and then ran the pipe cleaners through to one end, which was sewn shut and trimmed them and then sewed shut the other end. So this gives it both that sort of puffy look to it while also having some wire to bend in it, allowing it just to really clasp around my wrist um, by bending the wire in place on both sides. I did the neck. <laughs> I did the neck in a really similar way, uh, except to keep the closure, um, I also added a couple of hooks and eyes just because it's so much larger, the Chanel stems. 
pipe cleaners uh, wouldn't keep it in place quite as well. She also has a lovely pair of big ol' earrings. Uh, each of these earrings was done by taking a gold hoop earring and then creating again that little sandwich using the gold pleather. It saved my butt this entire cosplay, best investment. Uh, and a little uh, glued on section of that red satin in between each of the layers of gold. So it's basically a cutout of the gold, glue the red satin on the opposite side and then gold to cover it. And in between that sandwich is the hoop itself. So then it just slips into the ear. From the jewelry end, she also has a number of gold rings. Uh, these were just cheap gold rings that I found. Uh, I didn't worry about being super accurate them. They're very, very small and don't show up. There's only one that really needed to be made. So I took a, a gold ring base and a red rhinestone, a small sort of cabonk. It's definitely not the correct pronunciation. I uh, wrapped some warbler around it and then affixed it with a very small circle of warbler to the actual ring itself and painted that top gold. So you can see you get a very small gold ring. The next portion we're going to talk about is her wig. Now there are several components to this wig. Uh, I started with a base of the Maki wig in red from Purple Plum Wigs or AnimeStuffStore.com. You also could take a look at some other wigs that are offered by uh, places like uh, Epic Cosplay Wigs or uh, Arda Wigs. I went with this one largely because I needed several different components in the same color and none of those uh, other places had the correct options available. So this was the ones that I was able to get. Ideally, if you can find one, I would get a wig that is already styled to be pulled back in a ponytail. It means they're or already going to have done some of the work for you and both Epic Cosplay and Arda wigs have those available in the correct color, assuming everything is in stock. Uh, if not, you're gonna do a little bit of extra work yourself and that's okay, it's not that terrifying. The other thing to look for is you want a wig that's got a good skin cap along the top so that when you part the hair to the side, you're not gonna be revealing wefts underneath. And you're gonna want that regardless of what type of wig you get. And also make sure it's got a set of long bangs in the front because we're gonna be sweeping it to the side to style it. Now, if you get a wig like mine, you're gonna style it into a ponytail. Uh, a lot of that's going to mean sectioning off parts of the hair and pulling it back layer by layer. I often recommend kind of starting from the center and working your way outwards. When you've styled the base wig into a ponytail, you'll find that you see a lot of the wefts here on the side. The way to that cover that up is to take a, a spare weft and sew it in separately. So you can see here, right along this edge, I've sewn in an extra weft. Uh, that means that the rest of it isn't uh, quite as the, the uh, wefts are not going to be visible uh, along the side when I sweep it back, and then you pull that back into the ponytail. The other piece, as you'll notice here in the front, I've added a couple of hair clips. This wig gets heavy, so adding yourself some wig clips that go into the front of your hair here are really going to help keep that whole thing in place. So I had one uh, along each parts of the temple here and then slightly further back into the hairline. Once you've got the whole thing pulled up in your base ponytail, this bit is actually going to largely get turned into a big old bun that you're gonna be uh, sticking with at the top. Now the front, once it's styled and pulled up into a, uh, in the end of bun, uh, you'll also add some wefts here along the bottom hairline and then kind of loosen those. And that's gonna help disguise the wefts in the back as well as your own natural hair. Now in the front, this sweeping bangs really going almost all the way across is going to get pulled together and then twisted and hair sprayed. Uh, this part, if you want to make it more defined than I did, you can also add some like white glue or Elmer's glue to it. But I, I wanted it to be a little bit more loosey goosey. So I just twist it into kind of a little cinnamon roll and then add a couple of bobby pins, and a lot of hairspray to keep it in place. So it's my little swooshy cinnamon roll that gets done here. On the other side, and on this side too, I pulled a couple of bits out and just trimmed myself some ear locks. Uh, they're in the costume, but also they help cover my natural little bits of hair that are sticking out here, uh, especially because when I wore this, I had real blue hair. For this section, we're gonna be using more wefts, but also a ponytail clip. 
Now, a ponytail clip basically comes with a bunch of hair already attached to it. So you can see it's got a little clip. These wefts are just clipped over the top, so they just sort of loosen in. They're not really attached to it. They just sort of dig into the clip itself. And underneath here, the entire ponytail wig has been backcombed into a giant rat's nest. This is what gives all of the volume to this hair. This whole undersection has been backcombed and hairsprayed. And the weft on the top isn't really adding volume, but making that whole thing appear to be a lot smoother than it actually is. It's then bunched together in a ponytail, tied with a hair tie. And this little accessory uh, is made separately. Uh, it's a little piece of warbler tab with a green rhinestone embedded into it and painted gold using uh, the uh, rub and buff. And I use some gold elastic to create the uh, attachment for it. This then opens up and clips right here on the front. The wefts then fall to the side. So the bun and the combination of the wefts and the back combing are what ends up giving this all of the volume. And spray, hairspray this and uh, keep it together as you need to. The important piece to remember is before you actually put your wig on, should have talked about this first, you're gonna wanna make sure you get your tiara. Now the tiara goes underneath the whole wig. This front section is made out of some EVA foam, which I then cut into uh, and glued on a little bit of a rhinestone, which is secured in place with a tiny piece of warbla underneath. This is then glued to a section of the uh, pleather, and I've just got elastic sewn at the back, so I can slip it over and stretch it onto my head, and it'll stay nice and tight and in place. And then I get the whole wig on over the top. Uh, this is the crown tiara piece, which is a piece of EVA. You can in fact see it nice and bright and orange on the inside, uh, covered and glued with the green satin, a couple of little warbla double bubbles that have been painted gold and glued on the top, and the edges are finished using that gold pleather. You just slip this on over the ponytail or put it in beforehand. Uh, you'll find this will stay up better if you can actually get it into your natural hair uh, on your head and that'll kind of keep it more affixed in place. You want those grips really gripping in. Uh, this is, is just kept in place by being uh, on top and attached to the wig. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this breakdown has been helpful to you. Don't hesitate to leave any questions in the comment section below and head over to my website, randomtuesday.net, where I have tutorials, patterns, blueprints, and a whole host of un other information on this and many other costumes. You can also head over and check out my other YouTube videos. And don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more cosplay goodness. And lastly, and certainly not leastly, thank you to each and every one of my patrons who have helped make this and many other videos a reality. I would not be here doing this if it weren't for your continued and generous support. If you'd like to help me create more videos like this, a small monthly amount can help keep these videos coming. Thank you so much for watching.